Hello, boys and girls. I'm going to do something a little different today. Instead of telling the story, I'm going to read it from the Word of God. I've probably read this story 10 times in the last few days preparing to teach it, and I just don't want to leave anything out. So I've decided I'm going to read it to you. I'll try to take the um, pictures down and everything, but here we go. Something new. And before I move, before I start in prayer, um, I'm going to sing the Bible verses one more time. This is our last time I'm giving out new verses tomorrow. This is Psalm 91, 1 and 2. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Psalm 91, 1 and 2. And Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. That is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And because Elijah, Eliana, and Alora already know those now, I know that you all have had time to memorize them, and we're moving on to uh, a few more that you'll, will be included in Mr. Brian's email. And so, let me pray. Um, whatever things were written in the past were written to teach us so that through endurance and encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. And this is a great, hopeful scripture. Pray with me. Lord, you know how excited I am. I love this scripture. Probably one of my very, 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 very favorites. And I pray it will become a very, very, very favorite of these precious children too. And they'll see the power of God just exploded and ignited. Yes, Lord, we love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. So, where this story begins is on Resurrection Sunday. And word has gotten out that Jesus is not in the tomb. And let's see what happens. Now that same day, Resurrection Sunday, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. And they talked and discussed these things with each other. And as they did, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them but they were kept from recognizing him. Oh, power of God can do anything, kept them from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces were downcast. That means they were sad. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you only a visitor to Jerusalem? and do not know the things that have happened here in these last days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed, before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers, they handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it's the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they'd seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. But him, Jesus, they did not see. Jesus said to them, How foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all of the scriptures concerning himself. Can you imagine? 
As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he was going farther, but they urged him strongly, stay with us. It's nearly evening. The day's almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, he gave thanks. I always give thanks before we eat. Just another opportunity to pray. He broke it and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? Pray this all the time over us, that our hearts will burn while we hear the scriptures. Oh, that our love will just increase, bigger. They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven. And those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. And while they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said, Peace be with you. They were all startled and frightened, thinking he was a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, it's like, it's too good to believe. How can this be true? That's kind of what was going on with them. He asked them, do you have anything here to eat? Well, they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence, showing his body had raised and not just his spirit. Boop. He said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. And Jesus himself teaching all of this, not leaving out any scripture, showing them what he had done to fulfill every single thing. In Matthew 5, he, came, he said, I didn't come to abolish the law. I came to fulfill the law. Oh, my goodness. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. I have memorized that verse, verse 45 of 24, because I've prayed it so much over us that God would open our minds. Just as he opened the eyes of these people that were traveling to Emmaus, and they couldn't understand until God opened their uh, eyes. We need God to open our minds to the scriptures through the power of the Holy Spirit because they're living and active and they change us. And so I pray this all the time. Yes, Lord, open our minds to understand the scriptures. Okay, moving on. Woo and he told them, this is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I'm going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you've been clothed with power from on high. This power from on high is given to us too today. We repent of our sins and say Jesus is our only way to God. And God fills us with the power of the Holy Spirit that gives us the desire to do what's right and makes us feel conviction when we do what's wrong and empowers us to do what we could never do without him. Oh my goodness, God has blessed us so. We're such a blessed people. We just love Jesus. Okay, I'm going to close in prayer. Ah, read this again. 
I'm telling you, okay, this is my at least 11th time of reading this in the last few days. And I'm more excited every time I read it. Read it again. It's living. It's active. It's sharp. Okay. Father, thank you so much. We love you. Let us be. Let us have open minds to your scriptures. Open our minds to understand them. Yes, burn in our hearts as we hear your word. Cause us to be on fire, zealous for Jesus. In your name we pray. Love you guys.